शांति चारो और होगी शांति चारो और होगी शांति चारो और एक दिन ओहो मन में है विश्वास पूरा है विश्वास होगी शांति चारो और एक दिन Dear children you will be giving your most important exams of your school life from 21st April 2021 onwards due to corona pandemic this academic year was challenging for you all in terms of applying teaching and learning process in spite of that i'm sure all of you have studied well with complete passion and confidence throughout the year so we really appreciate everyone's hard work but if any student is still not sure and confident about their studies then no worries here a seem nyan channel has started a series for providing helping hand to all our students in this series we will solve all your queries related to science 1 and science 2 to make you feel confident about your exam preparation ssc at a glance a complete guidance series concept direction and coordination by mr bb jadav students of ssc must watch for revision and complete understanding and today we will be revising lesson number 1 of science 2 heredity and evolution what do you mean by the term heredity heredity is the transfer of biological characters from one generation to the other let's have a look at the figure the figure shows a daddy son and mom when we look at the figure very closely we observe that the eyes of the father and that of the son match to each other that means they are similar whereas if you closely look at the features of the mother and the son the hair color and the height of the mother and the son both are the same that means the child has inherited the color of the eyes and the color of the ears from the father whereas the child has accepted the color of the hair and the height from the mother this transfer of biological characters has been taken from the father and mother that is from one generation to the child which is the another generation therefore this concept is nothing but called as heredity now let's look at the timeline of scientist to explain the concept of heredity the first concept of heredity was given by the scientist grigor johann mendel Yes, Gregor Johann Mendel is known as the father of the modern genetics. After Mendel, the second scientist who explained us the concept of heredity was given by Hugo de Vries, who explained to us the mutational theory. Third, were pair of scientists Walter and Sutton who explained us about the pair of chromosomes present in the grasshopper. next was given by oswald mccarthy and macleod who explained to us that except viruses all living organisms have dna as their genetic material and lastly the concept of heredity was explained by jacob and monad who proposed to us a model of protein synthesis with the help of dna in bacterial cells so you see children the timeline of scientists began from mendel and it ended up to giving us a complete structure of protein synthesis in bacterial cell what is central dogma of life dear children dogma means a teaching or a principle central dogma is the process 
by which some kind of instructions in the DNA are converted into a functional product. So, here what happens is the DNA is converted into a very useful product. This principle was first proposed by the scientist Francis Crick. Initially, the DNA is converted to form RNA. Conversion of this DNA to RNA is called as transcription. Later on, this RNA so formed from the DNA is converted to proteins by the process called translation. So transcription and translation, they both are the major process that takes place during central dogma of life. So basically, in this particular process, we are going to convert our DNA into something useful product, which is nothing but proteins. Right now, we saw how our DNA is converted into RNA and further our RNA getting converted into a useful product, which we call proteins. So this is the entire structure of the formation of proteins. For the proteins to form, we need the machinery of the proteins, which we call ribosome. Ribosome is the only cell organelle in the body that helps us to produce proteins. Now, if you see, this ribosome is, is present on the strand of the mRNA which is in the sequence of 5 dash to 2, 3 dash. So this is the strand of the mRNA. Now children, clearly see, to start this entire protein synthesis, we need a start codon. Let's see what is the meaning of the word codon. A codon is a set of three nucleotides. Okay, now three nucleotides in the sense, if you see here, I have A, I have U, I have G. All these three nucleotides are present together. So the sequence of these three nucleotides is called a codon. That is why under AUG, I have written a start codon. That means to start this protein synthesis, I need a start codon, which is AUG. Now, the second thing which is very important to build this protein in our body is the tRNA. The first important thing, as I said, was mRNA, which is formed from the DNA. Second very important thing we need is a ribosome. Now, third very important thing that we need in this particular structure is the tRNA. Now, if you carefully look at the tRNA, dear children, this tRNA has an anticodon loop at the bottom of its structure. So the tRNA will bring the first amino acid into the ribosome. Now, if you see, the tRNA has brought the first amino acid into the ribosome, okay, which is, which is the anticodon of AUG. As you all know, A will complement with U, U will complement with A, and G will complement with C. So the first codon UAC is brought into the ribosome. Later on, this ribosome will bring will bring or will allow the second tRNA to bring in the codons. But here there is a sequence. When when the second codon enters the ribosome, okay, then when the second codon enters the ribosome, you see the second codon will be placed onto the second side present on the ribosome. So, the, so there are two sites inside the ribosome. The first site is for the first amino acid and the second one is for the second amino acid. But when the third tRNA brings in the codons, brings in the codons, the one of the amino acid from each side is shifted to the other. 
Now, when I say one of the amino acid from one side is shifted to the other, this particular change of location of amino acid is called as translocation. And this process keeps on happening until we form a big chain of peptide. Now, if you see at the figure, children, this figure, you see many codons attached together. Now, these codons are attached together by means of a bond, which we call peptide bond. Which we call peptide bond. Hence, this process will continue till you form a chain of peptides and your ribosome reaches the stop codon. Now, as I said, the ribosome needs a start codon, but to end this protein synthesis, there also has to be a stop codon. So the ribosome will go on to the stop codon and therefore your protein synthesis formation will stop. This is how complex proteins are formed in our body. Let's go to the next concept. The next concept of heredity is with respect to mutation. Now, dear children, if you see what is a mutation basically, a sudden change in a gene is called a mutation. Like for example, if you observe the figure, this figure has a main sequence. Now, let us try to understand the meaning of the word mutation. For example, if I break this sequence into three parts. Now, if you see, the first part of the sequence is as it is in the next one. The last part is also repeated the same. But the middle portion, instead of this TGC, a new sequence is being replaced there. Now, this replacement of one gene will cause a change in the entire structure of the gene. So, you see, children, a small change in this nucleotide will change the entire sequence of the gene. This concept is called mutation. So, if in a gene, any nucleotide changes its position, that causes a minor change in the structure of the gene and that is called a mutation. You must have learned about a disease in ninth standard which we sell sickle cell anemia, which is caused due to, uh, you know, a change in the structure of hemoglobin. That is a sixth position of the hemoglobin. So this change is nothing but called as mutation. So it can, it, um, even a minor change is called a mutation. Let's go to the second part of this chapter, which is evolution now. Now, evolution, we have two things to study in this lesson. We have the theory of evolution, which is very easy. And we have the evidences with respect to evolution. Let's first see the theory of evolution. Evolution is done in basically two different principles. The first principle is, Whenever there is evolution, not only means the all-round development of the body, but it also includes multidimensional development. Multidimensional in the sense, it is just not the body, but it is also with respect to the environment, with respect to geographical location, with respect to climate, etc., etc. So evolution is basically all-round and a multidimensional development. We all know that initially the life was formed in water, but we never know. We all keep the targeting. We all keep debating about the thing that in what form. So the first form of life which developed in the ocean was in the form of a protoplasm. Later from that protoplasm, unicellular organisms were formed. And these unicellular organisms gave rise to larger and more complex organisms. But... You must always remember all these changes starting from the protoplasm to the unicellular, to the complex organisms. This journey is very slow and it is gradual. Evolution cannot take place faster. All these changes which took place from the protoplasm till we 
formed on the earth, all these changes were very slow and gradual. And the duration of these changes were around 300 crore years ago. Let's move on to the evidences of evolution. Looking at the concept map, there are basically six evidences of evolution. First, morphological. Second, anatomical. Third, vestigial organs. Fourth, paleontological. Fifth, connecting links. Sixth, embryological. I said first is morphological. Second one, anatomical. Third one, vestigial. Fourth one, paleontological. Fifth one, connecting links. And sixth one, that is embryological. Let's move on to each evidence, which is very easy and simple. The first evidence is morphological evidence. What do you mean by the word morphology? Morphology is basically the body structure. Okay. If anybody asks you in simple words, what do you mean by the word morphology? Morphology means body structure. Now, I have given you certain examples in the figure. Like, for example, if you observe the faces of the dog, a sheep, a fox, and a cat, the physical features of all these organisms are one and the same. Even if you, can, if you take, for example, the venation of the leaves, the shape of the seed, the shape of the leaves, all these have similar structures in them. All this have the same body structure. Therefore, it is very clear and evident that we have come from our ancestors. The only thing that binds all these six together is only one statement that we have come from our forefathers. We have come from our ancestor and we have a common ancestor. So second one is morphological, anatomical. Look at the bones of each structure of these animals, a human, a cat, a whale, and a bat. If you look at all the four structures, the structure of all the four organisms are one and the same, although their functions might be different. But however, the structure of the bones is the same. So the first is similarity in the body structure, that is morphological evidence. Second evidence is anatomical evidence, means it is similarity in the bone structure. So if anybody asks you, what is the basic thing in anatomical, we must, we must be able to tell that it is similarity in bony joints or the bone structure. Let's come to the third evidence. The third evidence is a vestigial organ. What do you mean by the word vestigial organ? Useless organ, underdeveloped organ in our body, which is not functional at all is called as vestigial organ. Now, if you say which all are the vestigial organs, a very, very important question in the board, children. Name some vestigial organs. So you must know our ear muscles are our vestigial organs in our body. The appendix that we have in our body is a vestigial organ. Do not forget, we also have a tailbone that is a coccyx present in our body, which is one of the anatomic, which is one of the vestigial organs that is present in our body. So vestigial means useless or underdeveloped organs. Let's go to the fourth paleontological evidence. It is basically the study of fossils. Fifth is connecting links, where we are going to deeply study about the three basic animals, okay, in our syllabus, which is about a duckbill platypus, peripatus, and lungfish. But these connecting links also tell us that some animals or some morphological characters, they are related to two different groups. So we say that one group has come from the other group. And that is why we call them a connecting link. Sixth and the last we have is the embryological evidence. Like when we look at the initial stages of all the embryos of all the organisms, we see that the initial stages are all one and the same. However, in the latter part of the stages of development, these organisms begin to show certain changes. As a result, we can clearly see that we all come from a common ancestry. Now let's have a brief look at the connecting links. So we have three different animals. The first one being the duckbill platypus. The duckbill platypus 
is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals. Like reptiles, the duckbill platypus lays eggs, while that of mammals, it shows presence of hair and it also shows presence of mammary glands. So a duckbill platypus is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals. Second one we have is the lungfish. A lungfish is a connecting link between an Pisces and amphibians. The main feature of this animal is that in spite of, irrespective of being a fish, it breathes through the lungs, which is a feature of amphibians. So that is why it is said to be a connecting link between Pisces and amphibia. The third one is peripatus, which is a connecting link between analida and arthropoda. Like analida, it shows features of thin cuticle. Cuticle means the skin, segmented body, and it has got parapodia like organs, which it uses for locomotion. And like arthropods, it has features of tracheal respiration. That means respiration done with the help of trachea, and it shows open circulatory system. So, with this, we come to a conclusion that. We all have come from a common ancestors. The mammals have come from the reptiles and the amphibians have come from the fish. We move on to our next topic, which is Darwin's theory of natural selection. Darwin's theory of natural selection is based on the survival of the fittest. Darwin says that organisms reproduce prolificially, which means that only those organisms are able to survive, that is only those organisms are able to sustain, which show certain modifications in them, which are essential for their survival. So sustaining and selected organisms can perform reproduction and because of this reproduction, they can give rise to new species with their own specific characters. Next we have is a theory given by Lamarck. The full name for Lamarck is Jean Baptist Lamarck. His theory was based on acquired inheritance. He said that if there is any change in the body of the organism, this change is because of either the activity performed by that animal or it is because of the laziness of that animal. These changes are nothing but called as morphological changes. His concept based on this theory is nothing but called as use or disuse of organs. Certain examples given by Lamarck in his theory was the first one which included regarding the neck of the giraffe. He said that the neck of the giraffe has become too long due to browsing of leaves of the tall plants. And because of this, the giraffe had to extend their neck for several generations. The second example given by Lamarck is with respect to the weak legs of the swan and the duck, because these legs are now being used for swimming as they live in water. The third example given by Lamarck is about the snakes. He said that the snakes have lost their legs due to the burrowing habits. The fourth example given by Lamarck is with respect to the wings of ostrich and emu. He said that since the ostrich and emu do not use their wings at all, so their wings have become weak. All these examples given by Lamarck are type of acquired characters. And these acquired characters are transferred from one generation to the other. 
That is why this theory is called as Lamarck's theory in acquired inheritance. After studying animal evolution, we finally come to human evolution. The biodiversity, whether it may be plant, animals, or human beings, the biodiversity that we see today is formed from very simple unicellular organisms. But the basis of this change from unicellular to the current biodiversity that we see is because of evolution. Last dinosaurs were present on this earth approximately seven crore years ago. Post the dinosaurs, the monkeys that were formed were supposed to be evolved from animals which were similar to lemurs. The tails of these monkeys had disappeared about four crore years ago. They developed due to enlargement of their brains and also their hands and therefore ape-like animals came into existence. These ape-like animals reached the South and the Northeast Asia and they finally evolved into gibbon and orangutan. The other ape-like animals that stayed in Africa formed the gorilla and the chimpanzees. But this were all approximately 2.5 crore years ago. The apes started to use their hands for eating and for other works. The lumbar bones, which is present at the backbones of human being developed, and they started to stand in erect posture and in grasslands. The human-like animals, which are called homo, and skilled animals and humans were developed. The brain development and the discovery of fire took place during the Homo sapiens period. Later, Neanderthal man and the Cro-Magnon man evolved and man started to practice agriculture and other occupations. After learning the entire chapter, now let us look at some of the board questions that have come from this chapter, heredity and evolution. The first question is complete the following chart, which was asked in the year March 2019 for two marks. And the question is, you have to complete the evidences of evolution. So there are four evidences of evolution, namely morphological, second anatomical, third vestigial organs, and fourth paleontological. So in the exam, evidences of evolution was given and four boxes were given. So these are the answers of the four boxes, children. The next question was asked in the year October 2019 for two marks. And the question was, observe the following diagram and answer the following question. The diagram was with respect to the paleontological evidence where they had asked, which organism originated first, whether it is rabbit or the starfish? And second question was, name the era of the reptiles. Yes, so looking at the diagram, the organism that originated first is the starfish. And the era of the reptiles from the diagram was the Mesozoic era. Next question is, transfer of information from the molecule of DNA to mRNA is called as the DASH process. So it was asked as a fill in the blank. And the answer of this question is option number A, that is transcription. Next question, I am a connecting link between reptilian and mammals. What is my name? 
the answer of this question is duck built platypus question asked in the same year march 2019 was for three marks and the question was answer the following question the first question is what do you mean by central dogma second question what is transcription third what is meant by triplet codon so please read each question carefully what do you mean by central dogma yes central dogma dogma means principle as we have all learned so the answer is information about protein synthesis stored in dna and appropriate proteins are synthesized as per requirement these proteins are synthesized through the rna therefore this process or this principle is called central dogma next question is what is transcription mrna which is produced from the sequence of the nucleotides present on the dna is called transcription third triplet codon the mrna formed in the nucleus comes into the cytoplasm it brings amino acids that contains three nucleotides hence sequence of three nucleotides is called a triplet codon let's move on to the next question the next question was asked in the year the next question was asked in the year november 2020 for three marks explain the darwin's theory of natural selection as we have all studied darwin's theory is based on the survival of the fittest it says that organisms reproduce prolifically only those organisms sustain or survive which show the modifications essential for winning the competition and the fourth point sustaining and selected organisms can perform reproduction and thereby give rise to the new species with their own specific characters next question was asked again in the year november 2020 for three marks stating define a vestigial organs write any name of vestigial organs in human body and explain how one human vestigial organ is functional in another animal answer degenerated or underdeveloped useless organs of organisms are called as vestigial organs well some of the examples of vestigial organs in human body are appendix tailbone wisdom tooth etc one human vestigial organ which is functional in another animal is the appendix which is functional in ruminants ear pinna is functional in monkeys next let's look at some of the revision questions and let's see how much you can answer first question fill in the blanks dash principle of hugo de vries explained the causality behind the sudden changes in dna and second question trna has dash with complementary sequence to the codon present on mrna anybody can recollect the answer please think you hugo de vries has given which principle and please think what is present on the trna that has a complementary sequence well yes your answer is definitely correct what you think in your mind so let's go to the answer principle of hugo de vries is the mutation principle and the trna has anticodons with complementary sequence to the codon present on the mrna let's go to the next revision question which is odd man out we you have coccyx intestine wisdom teeth and appendix so you have to select which is the odd man out given in the figure so the correct answer is yes the right answer 
is the intestine because it is fully functional organ in human whereas all the others are vestigial organs let's go to the next question identify the part labeled as x yes and the part labeled as x is the ear muscle next we have find out the correlation synthesis of rna is transcription then synthesis of proteins is answer is translation synthesis of rna is transcription and synthesis of protein is translation it is one of the most important and basic thing of lesson number 1 next question is question based on figure identify the molecule labeled as p in the given diagram so if you can see the letter p you have to identify what is that molecule labeled as p what would be the sequence on the anticodon if the corresponding codon sequence on the mrna is gau so you have to find out the anticodon sequence for gau during the process of translation the amino acid are bound by which bond yes so please think about the answer okay so let's deal with the answers the molecule labeled as p is the trna the anticodon sequence for gau as you know g is complementary to c a is complementary to u and a is complementary to again u so sequence is cua during the process of translation one amino acid is connected to the other amino acid by peptide bonds let's go to the next question after looking at those revision questions here you have some of the assignment questions which you can solve on your own to check whether you have understood the chapters or not well these are some of the most important questions that you must know from this chapter question number 1 what do you mean by transcription and translation question number 2 define vestigial organs and also give examples of it question number 3 give reason peripatus is the connecting link between annelida and arthropoda question number 4 explain with suitable examples importance of anatomical evidence in evolution question number 5 define fossil explain importance of fossil as a proof of evolution question number 6 write short notes on a lamarckism and b darwin's theory of natural selection well students you can write down this question and you can try to find out the answer of these assignment questions dear children if you are able to attempt these questions i'm sure you will do very well in this topic we have covered all the questions in the revision session related to the concept of chapter 1 heredity and evolution i'm sure you will be doing very well in the exam and if you find this video useful then kindly like share and subscribe aseem nyan wahini a similar set of quality videos based on other chapters in science 1 and science 2 will soon be uploaded in future also if you have any question or doubts related to chapter done today you can write into the comment section we will surely solve them till then best wishes for your ssc upcoming exams thank you